Hello and welcome to The Justice Factor, coming to you live from Hyde Park, Johannesburg. At least 30 young men have died at initiation schools in Pumalanga. At least six have died at similar schools in Limpopo. Shouldn't these schools be banned? Ngosi Sipomasangu of the Pumalanga Provincial House of Traditional Leaders, Mbuisa Lobota of the South African National AIDS Council Men's Sector, and Setlamurahu Tobejani, General Secretary of Contralesa, join me today to discuss this and more. After that discussion, we'll name and shame our loser of the week. But first, I'm joined by Dominic Matlangu, the PT editor of the Times newspaper, to discuss the week's top stories. Dominic, I loved your paper on Friday. You had a big headline saying, President Jacob Zuma finds his voice at long last. And this is when he said, no, people should stop using my name in vain. Is that, is that enough to make the Gupta Gate scandal go away? Now, what is surprising is that uh, it took the president three weeks to, to, to finally uh, speak on this matter. And uh, South Africans were wondering in those three weeks, where was the president? Hence, we went to that uh, headline that says uh, the president finally found his voice. I don't think justice, uh, this matter will uh, go away. Um, as much as uh, Minister Chafrat uh, you know, told parliamentarians that um, government is doing everything in its power, you know, to, to bring those who were involved in this thing to, to a book. But... Um, as the time Let me stop yeah. you there. One of the curious things in, the, in that final report that uh, Jeff Hadebe and, uh, and the DGs wrote, th there's references to number one wants this to happen. Number one this. Who is number one? I mean, we should not, uh, you know, be, be, be running away from this thing. Number one simply means the head of state. I mean, that's my reading says number one you always refer to the man in charge. And number one didn't, didn't in his press statement on Friday, on Thursday, didn't say anything about the fact that these two people, Kolwani, uh, Anderson, other people say, you know, number one wants this to happen. You know, what is surprising in this country is that, uh, I mean, uh, also blame the media and the general public that we have accepted the explanation that the uh, government is going to come hard on the name droppers. I mean, show me in our law books, you know, a charge that will say Justice Malala will be charged for, 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 for saying Dominic Mahlang, you know, in, mm. in other places. So I think that government is simply trying just to, to whitewash the whole thing. Mm. Should it, shouldn't uh, the people... If Kolwani and other people say, okay, this jet from, uh, chartered by the Guptas must land at Watertluf Air Base, surely the, the, the DGs must follow that trail from Kolwani uh, and all these other civil servants straight to uh, the, the Gupta House. I mean, uh, we, we did not mince our words on, uh, on, on Thursday as the Times newspaper. We simply said, charge the Guptas. Mm. There's clear evidence. I mean, first they went to two ministers. Those ministers said no. Mm. And then they went for their plan B. And their plan B is the one that, uh, you know, created all the scandal. And uh, it's surprising that even the report is even shying away to name them. Mm. Will they be charged? I think government should charge them. If not, then it sends another message out there that... Uh, if you've got deep pockets, you'll get away with it. Mm. There's another story that broke yesterday, uh, and uh, President Zuma is getting another jet, according to Nosivio Mapisa Nakula, the defense minister. Um, South Africans going through this, this hard economic times, is this, is this the right way to do it? Should it be allowed to happen? I think in this country, uh, every five years, you know, whoever is the head of state will demand a new jet. I mean, President Tabombegi, the former president, I mean, uh, recently bought a jet. So I'm wondering, is it old or is Zuma needing a, a new jet every three or four years? I think government will have to explain, I mean, uh, all this thing, because of, on the other hand, they are telling South Africans to tighten their belts, yet there's money to buy a new jet. I was interested in that the Minister of Defense says, if you look at the amount of money we spend chartering planes, we could actually be spending all this money better by buying one. Should we get that information on the table? I think it should, it should be debated uh, not only in Parliament, but, but, but uh, South Africans should come on board here. I mean, do we really, really need uh, a head of state to now and again buy a new jet? Le they must tell us what is wrong with the, with the old one. Mm. Um, uh, we've, had, uh, quite, uh, we've had quite a week, I think, uh, uh, this week with labor unrest and the platinum belt and, and elsewhere. Where can, can our political le leadership intervene decisively in this thing and tell us whether, uh, you know, speak to the union, speak to business? Because if you look at the rent, it went from boom, it just was downhill all the way. Uh, the economic indicators are not looking good. Where is this going and can our politicians actually do anything about it? 
They can't, Justice, because of first thing is that uh, every time a minister intervenes in this matter, first it's, it thinks politically. Mm -hmm. And politically, you know, no way it stands, you know, in terms of its relationship with the ANC from Kosato. Yeah. So whatever intervention that they are going to bring on the table is already tainted because of as for today, you, you hear ministers uh, blaming uh, uh, Amku, you hear ministers uh, uh, blaming, blaming Mr. Matunjo, mm -hmm. yet they are, they are unable to deal with the, with the real issue on the ground that says NUM is no longer a majority union in that, in that part of the world, mm -hmm. and they must respect uh, uh, those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the NUM seems to be imploding. It's lost more than 50,000 members in, the, in just the platinum sector. What's, what's the future for that trade union? I think... There is uh, still a future for it if they are going to, to, to really, really represent workers on the mm. ground. I think now you see a shift where workers are saying that they forget about the slogans, forget about the history. All that we need is better service. And that's what Vavia has been saying mm. all, all these months to say, give workers a better service and they will, uh, and they, uh, and they will come to the table. Mm. Um, uh, and AMCU, does, it seems to be gaining ground hugely. It seems to be uh, doing uh, a lot, uh, not just in platinum, in coal and gold as well. Um, it, it was viewed as a violent union just a few months ago. It seems to be gaining ground quickly. My fear is that uh, it's growing too fast. And uh, whether they've got the necessary structures to, to, to handle those numbers is something else. And also it seems as if it's a one-man show. You know, uh, from where I'm seated, you mm. know, it seems like Mr. Mtunjwa is the is the only only boss there. Mm. So my fear is that it's growing too fast. There's nothing wrong in growing, but grow with necessary structures on the ground. Well, I mean, we've uh, we've looked at terrible things that are happening in our country and some of the more controversial things. Can I just say? Iwisa Kaiser Chiefs, Iwisa Kaiser Chiefs has won a double. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, the chairman yesterday said that uh, I'm a course at Jabulile, and so, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic Masangu, thanks so much for Thank your you. time. <laughs> is it part of our culture for 36 young men to die at initiation schools? That discussion after this. News that moves. ENCA.com.